Good day, I'm Kerry Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Friday, October 3. Government has allocated $150 million more to contain and control the spread of the chikungunya virus. The bulk of the funds will go towards a massive cleanup campaign aimed at detecting and destroying mosquito breeding sites. Government's response came out of a technical meeting of the island's National Emergency Response Team at Jamaica House Thursday. Chairman Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller called on the team to be thorough and consistent in the planning, implementation and public public communication of the ongoing national response. For her part, the Prime Minister will be leading a Chick V cleanup campaign in her Southwest St. Andrew constituency on Saturday. Mrs. Simpson Miller and community members will be joined by a team from Digicel, Odpem, NSWMA, the Ministry of Local Government and the KSAC. Meanwhile, Jamaica is getting assistance from the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, to prevent and prepare for any possible introduction of Ebola in the island. This comes against the background of the present Ebola outbreak in West Africa and the recently confirmed case in the United States. The Health Ministry's Acting Permanent Secretary, Dr. Kevin Harvey, is in Washington, D.C. attending the PAHO Directing Council meeting where he's been discussing the partnership. Among other things, PAHO has confirmed that it will provide personal protection equipment, PPEs, and gears for healthcare workers. Dr. Harvey says there is also dialogue with the United States government for the provision of additional PPEs. He points out that Jamaica already has some in stock and procurement has been fast-tracked to acquire additional numbers. PAHO, meanwhile, is also providing guidelines on the collection, storage, and the transportation of any Ebola sample to the United States Centers for Disease Control or the Canadian Public Health Agency. The parties have also discussed the provision of protocols and strengthening detection at points of entry and for accident and emergency departments, which are the areas a potential case will most likely present. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller is affirming government's commitment to the economic empowerment of women and to systematically expose and correct gender disparities and inequality. The Prime Minister was addressing an International Monetary Fund IMF seminar on women, work and the Jamaican economy held on Tuesday at the Jamaica Conference Centre. The Jamaican government is committed to gender equity and has put in place policies and legislation that foster greater participation of women in the country's economic life. The recent launch of government's MSME and entrepreneurship policy specifically addresses the issue of gender. In an effort to garner more revenue from the sport industry, a Jamaica sport program has been launched. The ministries of sport and tourism and entertainment have joined forces for the program, which will seek to implement a major sport attraction initiative for which Jamaica has a strong brand globally. The Ministry of Tourism is committed to ensure that all areas that complement our growing tourism industry are tapped to reap maximum benefits. This forms part of our ongoing efforts to diversify the tourism product. The Tourism Announcement Fund is financing the program. At the launch, Sport Minister Natalie Nita Headley said the foundation had been laid for the hosting of international sport events in Jamaica. The guidelines for hosting international events are clearly defined. They are now before the National Sport Council for ratification. These guidelines will form the basis of how we operate jointly in seeking to att attract international events. The Jamaica Sport Committee includes representatives of the JTB, JAMPRO, FIFA and other government and private individuals. Close to 100 students from the Area 4 Police Division in Kingston and St. Andrew have received scholarships and bursaries totaling $1.4 million. This was made possible through the Education Trust Fund being operated by the Area 4 Police Civic Committee in partnership with a number of public and private sector sponsors. Under the program, needy students in the 12 to 18 age group receive scholarships and bursaries to prevent them from dropping out of high school and to contribute to the country's crime problem. Crime is not the problem. Crime is a symptom of deeper problems. And to the extent that we can start to solve these deeper problems, like we are attempting to do now, we will in the future have fewer crimes to contend with. Our mutual interests are tied up in this. If we do it together, we will succeed. And finally, residents of Treadways in St. Catherine are benefiting from the opening of an internet cafe at the Treadways Gospel Assembly. The cafe is equipped with two desktop and two laptop computers and a multi-purpose printer. It's the project of GIS Production Director and Civil Servant of the Year for 2013-2014, Enthros Campbell, and reflects the theme, Transformation and Renewal for a Better Tomorrow. 
this internet cafe was born out of a desire to give back something to the community. Science, Technology, Energy and Mining Minister Philip Paulwell says the initiative supports government's thrust to increase access to broadband services. What we want to see is what Enthrose is doing here today. How are we going to get our people to have access to the technology that will enable us to develop ourselves, that will enable us to be a part of this global village that sees information as valuable as a tool for learning, but also as a tool for earning. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Kerry Ann Smith. Thanks for watching.